Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Malkin, and we're here today with Bob Karate, Don Ruggieri, and Greg Foligno to talk about the tradition and history of Massachusetts Maritime Buccaneer Athletics. We'll start with Bob Karate. Coach, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Jake? Do doing very well. Good. Doing very well. Um, so, Coach Karate, you uh, have been around for a very long time. You were the first baseball coach at Massachusetts Maritime Academy, and uh, you were also the athletic director um, prior to uh, Mike Kelly, who we'll talk to later, uh, coming in in 2016. So, uh, Coach Karate, let's start with baseball. You started here in 1973 as a head baseball coach, uh, and you left the program after the 2015 season. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Buccaneer baseball. Well, I came here in 1973. Ruggs was my uh, my boss out at uh, Falmouth High School. He was a football coach, and uh, I was a baseball coach. And uh, came over here. Bernie Gometti uh, actually hired all of us. Came over in '73 and started the uh, baseball uh, uh, program, and also uh, assisted uh, Ruggs with the uh, football. Uh, program. So right around the same time in 1973, Don Ruggieri, former uh, head football coach here at uh, Massachusetts Maritime Academy, the, the first one, uh, you came over in 1973, and we hear, we've heard all day already talking off camera about how uh, you were coaches, Coach Karate's boss, but he was also uh, your boss after, after a while. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, you coming over from Falmouth in 1973. Well, we worked together in Falmouth sure. uh, prior to 73. And we were very successful. And they wanted to reinstitute football at Mass Maritime Academy. The president was uh, Admiral Lee Harrington. And Lee Harrington, uh, and I, I interviewed with Lee Harrington, and uh, he offered me the, the job. And uh, I, at first, I was hesitant about coming over here because we had a great situation in Falmouth. But I decided that there was. Uh, no way that uh, I could refuse the job because a person who is in the coaching field usually either picks up somebody else's success or somebody else's failure and takes it from there. This was instituting an entire program from square one, and that was a challenge, and uh, that was one of the reasons that I decided to, to come to Mass Maritime Academy. And over the years, so from 1973 uh, up until now even, uh, you guys instituted some some great programs, whether it was baseball or football, and you know every everybody knows Mass Maritime baseball and Mass Maritime football. Um, what what it, was it like over those years to to institute programs that everybody did know and everybody understood what Mass Maritime was all about? Well, you take uh, 1982, uh, we were New England champions in in football, we were in uh, baseball, um, in basketball. And our wrestling pro program was a, a national uh, a power. Uh, when we came here, we needed to uh, uh, recruit young people that wanted to go to Mass Maritime. And we were successful because we had coaches that really believed uh, in, in the uh, program and uh, led us to a lot of success. And somebody that kept a lot of your athletes healthy over the years is Greg Foligno, who was the uh, head athletic trainer up until 2012. And uh, Greg, what was it like working with, with these two coaches and, and what was it like your time beginning at Mass Maritime up until now? It, it was special to, to say the very least and, and to say in, stay in one location for that many years, I think for me it was 35, it was a, a testimony to the, the program, the student athletes, um, it was just a great place to work. And you know how I found Mass Maritime, I had first, five first cousins that went to school here, but my mentor in college at the University of Tampa, um, one of his classmates at Tampa was Joe Delari. And they were close, and sure enough, he said Joe Delari just left the Boston Celtics to come to Mass Maritime as the athletic trainer. And that year, I was graduating from college, and so I came up here, sought out Joe Delari, um, and found a home, basically, for, the, for my entire career. When Joe left, or you know, to, to go into the private sector, and, and I was fortunate enough to get the job after working for his, his, his assistant in 1980. And, 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 and you're still here as the curator of the Hall of Fame, uh, which is in the athletic building uh, on the other side of campus. And, and um, having seen the amount of athletes and, and coaches uh, through your time, 
what's it been like being able to to curate the Hall of Fame and, and be around those people? The connection to former student athletes. Um, my role as the curator is to really help them um, develop their plaque that goes on the wall. So it's reaching out to them and having conversations about, you know, and it's a small talk that comes from it. Where you been, where you been doing, and, and um, just those relationships over the years with um, former student athletes that the majority of them I had worked with. So it's, it's, it's been wonderful. And hey Joe, just to interject, right? He and I used to get along well, but these two would always argue, all right? Uh, he would, didn't want any of his players in that <laughs> training room because he, they wouldn't go out to practice. So I always was the mediator to get the young people on the, on the uh, field because these two guys would That's always not be true. arguing. Thank you, Bob, for correcting. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for correcting uh, yeah. Joe's statement <laughs> because still right. to this day, I tell Greg that no football player ever got better in the training room. Right. <laughs> and uh, I used to advocate closing the training room during his tenure here. I'm just joking, I know Greg. That. I was going to say, we, we, don't, we don't Greg condone was a very sincere <laughs> and good trainer. And he did, he uh, probably over my tenure, maybe won one game for us as a trainer. <laughs> that's, that's good. And that was 29 years. Yeah. That's okay. One in 29 years, you're doing all right. I count that as a win. Uh, so we, we talk about the, the relationships uh, with former student athletes, former coaches. And Bob, one of your, actually, Bob and Don, one of your former players is now the director of athletics uh, here at Mass Maritime, and we'll, we'll talk to him a little bit later, you and I. Uh, but uh, what's it like to have that kind of history here, where you have, you have so many former student athletes that either stick around, stay here, or get the job after you leave? Uh, that's been a special uh, <clears throat> situation at Mass Maritime. Uh, our friendship um, goes way beyond Mass Maritime. It goes with our families and, and whatever, and that, we took that kind of a philosophy and brought it here to have a buccaneer family. And uh, when you have someone like um, Mike come over and, you know, take over for, uh, for me as the baseball coach and take over as the uh, athletic director, man, is the, it, it, it's, it's so special. It just doesn't happen at other places. But because the coaches here believed in that family situation, believed in that, um, and, and actually carried it out. We were all friends on and off the, uh, of the field, you know, so um, it's terrific. If I could uh, comment on that also, I think that one of the reasons that the programs were successful here from where they were initially instituted was the fact that we had a group of young men uh, that believed in the academy, believed in the players, and uh, we all work together. And we work together very nicely, and I think that is probably one of the main reasons that we were successful during the tenure that we were here. I mean, we could bring up the names of, of people who are assistant coaches and coaches and head, head, of, head of certain programs, and we all had a common interest to better not only the situation here at the academy, but to better the situation for the cadets athletically. And, uh, and I think that was one of the main reasons that we were successful. Well, the other thing too, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, the two sport athlete, yeah. Mikey was a, uh, you know, a, a all conference uh, a football player, all conference uh, a baseball, baseball player. Don't stroke his ego yet too much because we are no, going to talk to but, him after. But, but no, we're you know, Go ahead, coach. Th that's what we had. You know, uh, all of the coaches working together. Sure. We never tried to uh, try to institute where we would have just one player play one sport, and that helped us uh, uh, during that uh, uh, beginning uh, years, and it carried over. And now most most other players, you know, are uh, in specified uh, sports, you know, so that was a, 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 a major, major uh, uh, change for us. That dual athlete, that t two athlete or two sport athlete now, we see a lot on the, on the women's side of things here at Mass Maritime. <clears throat> and let's touch on that a little because during, during your times, I mean, especially during your time, not only did you see uh, the softball program instituted, but while you were the director of athletics, uh, women's soccer, uh, women's lacrosse, mm -hmm. uh, volleyball came back because volleyball had left for a while and came yeah. back. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about women's sports at Mass Maritime and, and 
how those have grown over the years? Well, guys would always uh, uh, complain about it. You know, they'd always say that, you know, that I was more interested in, in the women's program. But I understood that the women on this campus worked harder uh, to, uh, to be able to get onto that field. They had the same responsibilities in, in the regiment, okay? And then they had to come over and start a program where they were had at the best 10% of our population were, were women and whatever. And they made it happen together. They pulled together and found ways to keep those teams uh, in, in, as, a, as, a, as a group. And uh, without them, you know, uh, I don't know if anybody realized it, but we wouldn't have been able to keep the uh, our program because we wouldn't have met the NCAA regulations of a number of teams. So uh, our women were instrumental in, in building the uh, our NCAA program. But more importantly, I'll tell you what, they really worked at uh, trying to develop their programs. And you can see how successful they are now. And to stay with the women's a athletics side of things, uh, Coach Ruggieri, your granddaughter just graduated from Massachusetts Maritime That's Academy. That's correct. We're very and proud of our granddaughter and our grandson we had That's graduating right. too, both in the same class. That's right. Yep. Yes. And, and you know, every time I, I bring either one of them up, uh, Tina especially, you get a smile across your face. Yes, I do. Because the amount of times in the last two years I would see you at, at, at her volleyball games, mm -hmm. uh, her volleyball matches. And uh, um, Tina Ruggieri, uh, also uh, the first volleyball player at Mass Maritime to record a thousand digs, uh, which for those of you that don't know is a defensive uh, stat uh, in volleyball that I had to be uh, taught myself when I got here because I didn't know much about the game. But coach, uh, s sticking uh, with Tina on the volleyball court, what was that like to see her play here four years after all the time you spent here? Well, first of all, be, without, without even the athletic end of it, just to see her come here, and to see my grandson come here and both graduate in the same class was uh, fantastic, family-wise. Uh, her as an athlete, she just uh, was highly competitive from the day she was born. And I, I can attest to that. And uh, to see her accomplish what she did here in the volleyball program certainly was very, very gratifying for me as a grandfather and a coach. Uh, and I can't say enough about it. Yeah, it is a. It's just a really cool story, yeah, and yeah. and to to go through the history of everything, and you know, you guys talk about the family and the tradition and where everything is. I mean, you brought that program back, uh, the volleyball program, and you know, if you hadn't, maybe she doesn't come here. But Tina was such a great cadet; she was a, a good student athlete, and that's what you see out of our our female cadets and female student athletes here at at Massachusetts Maritime. So. Um, getting back to you guys and, and your coaching acumen here, uh, Bob, what, what, were one of, what were some of your, your favorite moments uh, on the baseball field as, as head coach of the Buccaneers? Going to practice. Uh, literally, I mean, um, I just love practice. Uh, so, uh, I, I mean, I, you know, to say that I had some special uh, um, memories, uh, there, were, uh, there were many. Uh, I think about uh, the number of times that um, we would sit in that dugout um, after we lost the game and, and um, discussed uh, what we needed to, uh, to do better. And to, uh, to, that was a memory that I, I will have the rest of my life, guys focusing in and trying to uh, <clears throat> accomplish something the uh, next day. Uh, naturally, uh, there were some nice wins uh, along the way. We had a great rivalry with... Uh, uh, the Bears up at Bridgewater and, 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 and whatever. But I would say that um, practice was the, the most fun uh, as far as I'm concerned about coaching at Mass Maritime. It, practice to me was something that I just absolutely loved and think about it. I can actually remember more practices than I can remember uh, what happened on, on, at, at, at uh, uh, game day, you know. And uh, so that's what I remember. I'm starting to lose it again a little bit. So I don't, I don't know if I can. Well, wait, let's let's change gears to football and, and go along with that. And Coach Ruggieri, I mean, you, you had um, a, a number of championship teams in '81, '83. I mean, a, a storied career here. What what were some of some of your favorite moments uh, as head coach of the football program? Believe it or not, the championships were not storied moments. Sure. The uh, the development of the program was probably the most storied moment. Uh, two two areas. One uh, was going from basically having no facilities other than the gym itself. The gym was here. But when we started with football, I can remember 
the maintenance crew coming in to the office on a Wednesday, I believe it was. We didn't have goal posts up. Uh, they didn't know how to line the field. They wanted me to go out and help them line the field because they didn't know how to line a football field, and that's fact. And, uh, you know, going from that point to seeing these young people, even though we had adversities, overcome the adversities with the coaching, with the talent that they had, and going from one level to the next level and being competitive. And we were very well respected in a very short period of time in the New England Football Conference. As you know, uh, we started in 73. In 77, we won. We had an 8-1 and record and won the conference championship. So those types of things, to see people set goals and then ultimately get to the point where they achieve their goals. And let me tell you, there were bumps along the way. There were a lot of hiccups. When we were turning the corner, the ball never seemed to bounce the right way. <clears throat> but that's preparation, and that's, you know, that's part of the game. But we did turn the corner, and I think that was probably one of the highlights for me, is to seeing the program go from one level to the next level where we were competitive and respected. And perhaps the other one, and this is a side light here because yeah, I don't think it's ever happened in football before. We would go on a winter cruise, and you're going to have to help me, Bobby, with the times on this because I think you might have been on the cruise at that time. <laughs> we would go on a winter cruise, and uh, I think it was in 1981, the ship wasn't ready to go to sea. It wasn't approved by the Coast Guard to go on the cruise. Now, in that year, we brought in 39 freshmen, and we had four uh, seniors that shipped commercially, so they didn't have to go on the cruise. But on Friday afternoon, uh, in early in September, the ship was okayed to go on the cruise. Now, it had been delayed all the way through. And we had to, uh, I actually stood, and I can envision it, I can envision it now, watching the ship go with, 40 veterans on it. And I had to call Vic Gatto, who was a coach at uh, Tufts University at that, that time, and tell him we couldn't fulfill our commitment to a schedule. And then we had to meet as a coach, coaching group to see if we could f f uh, fulfill our uh, entire season schedule, because what, what we had to deal with was the incoming freshmen and four seniors, and the veterans were all out to sea. That catapulted into a situation where we I actually got a call on an afternoon when we decided that we were going to continue our, our program and we'd go week by week whether we could f fulfill our commitment. And I actually got a call <clears throat> from CBS, and they, I actually thought it was a friend kind of pulling my chain. Uh, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Is this Coach Ruggery? I says, yes, the name's Ruggeri, and it is Coach Ruggeri. I says, who's calling, please? The, say, the fellow says, CBS. So I'm saying to myself, I got these young people out on the field, and uh, I'm, I'm not in the mood to fool around with some friend of mine that's, you know, saying they're CBS. Huh. So I said, okay, CBS, what do you want? And they said, we heard, picked up over the wires that your troops we're out on maneuvers. This, these are his exact words. And I said, first of all, they're cadets, and they're out to sea on a training mission to qualify for Coast Guard exam. So the next thing I know, I'm making arrangements for the crew from CBS to come down. And they spent a week here. Irv Cross and I became very good friends. Uh, Bob was interviewed. I was interviewed. You may have been interviewed. Some of the people at the academy were interviewed. But this was a unique situation because the, the, the seniors and the veterans were out at sea and we were committed to our schedule with freshmen and four seniors that had shipped commercially. In the middle of the season, the ship comes back and now we have 80 people in the locker room on a Monday that 40 of them had never met the other 43. And had been out on a ship and probably had been out, out on a ship that were ticked off that wanted their senior year, wanted to play football. We went five and one dur during the period of time that they were out at sea, and we went one and two when they come back, <laughs> and that was because it was just it was just unique. Well, Rugs, you know, I, we were up at Plymouth State, and uh, we uh, we got we got our butts handed to us uh, yeah. up there, and we're coming home on a bus, and 
I was just standing up in the, in the front, and he says to me, hey, do you think that we can uh, pull this off? Do you think we can play next week? Uh, I had gone after the game. I, I saw our tailback. I think he carried the ball. Uh, Stevie carried the ball, I think, around 41 times. I mean, he was just beat up, you know, and whatever. And I, we just looked at each other and said, you know, we're going to have to l see if we can do it week uh, by week because we were with all freshmen playing at the sure. at the college level. And one of the things we didn't want to do was to get uh, a, a, a kid's hurt. But that right. was a special that was a that special was a, that event, was a you know, and, situation. and the kids oh, still talk totally about unique. it to this day, you know, so, yeah. uh, and, and it'll be a, a memory for a lifetime. It's a Buccaneer story. And, and that's, and that's what's sure. unique about this school. Yeah, yeah it is. The things, the things that other schools don't have to uh, deal with, uh, we do, and, it, and it's mm -hmm. always... Joe, uh, one of the things I thought about when, you know, when Kel called me about this was the fact that to run an athletic program here, there's a lot of adversity, and I think it's credit to the young men and women that go to school here, because it seems that the tougher the job is, the more they dig in, Especially and that's here. the character of the people who are here at the academy. Well, you know, you talk about that. Uh, uh, you know, I'll speak right in that camera. You know, talk about dig digging in. Think about this. You know, when we went to a winter cruise. We lost uh, uh, our yeah. winter season, right. all right? So our fall programs were okay, but it's affected not not only losing, like I said, we had a championship basketball and a wrestling, wrestling. program and whatever, yeah. but our hockey program uh, that year was 27 and something, okay? But our fall program, okay? Our fall program, I remember those young people, okay? My seniors not wanting to play uh, that, that, that year. Oh, when we only played, uh, I think it was 11 games because they didn't want to use that year of eligibility and whatever. And you know what? The idea was that's the mission of the school. We needed to, uh, to, to buy into it and whatever. And all of the Buccaneers, that's what they did. All of yeah. our fall kids helped our spring kids, and we all bought into this uh, 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 winter cruise, and that's why our program is where it is uh, today. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you, Ruggs. Um, these, these young people always dig in. They, they always find, mm -hmm. uh, find a way. Yeah. I, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the big things I think is, is we used to, when, when, at least recruiting for me, I used to be on campus and try to meet with an individual who was interested in the school with a parent or guardian sure. or whoever. And to me, the biggest asset were the people that were here. I always took them around, showed them, and then put them in touch. I think Kel even. Uh, and, and McDivitt uh, one time, but those two didn't talk very much, so I don't know. Either. But the person ended up coming here because of the people that were here, the type yeah, of situation they. And that's who that's who you want here. You want so people who want to buy into uh, uh, what this school's about. There, there, there's a million places to to uh, to uh, go and whatever, but you want to go to a place where you're going to enjoy it, and it's, and you're going to get a career that uh, you'll uh, be uh, not only proud of, but you'll be uh, uh, successful. So, uh, yeah, um, you have to buy into it, and all of us mm -hmm. uh, are, are bought into it. All right, and that kind of. Um, flowed over to the uh, to the young people and that's why it's the tradition that, that we have that's the tradition that we have and guess what everybody talks about that but guess what it lives here it lives here in mass maritime it is very different di very different here uh, compared to other places that, that you've been or or you know i, I mean uh, but like you guys said you came over as a fa family and and you instilled that even now yeah, i mean it, it is still that way uh today for someone that has been here a lot less time than, than you all have, um, I see that day in and day out um, here. And, you know, you, uh, Coach Ruggieri, you showed some pictures prior to, to coming over here. And there's a picture from 1973. And in 1977, the team is, the football team is twice the size. And now today, uh, head coach Jeremy Cameron has more guys than he has uniforms. Uh, right. Quite literally, I mean, you know, we we have uh, over a hundred guys on the roster in the 2019 season. So, and, and that goes back to buying in, and all these kids buy in, and that's another thing too. Is sometimes you lose players. I'm sure it happened during your times as head coaches. And one of the best things is is that they stay, and they stay around to to be a cadet here, and and not just a buccaneer. And that that goes into finding the right people. Well, 
you, you know, I, I think I can speak for Bobby. I know I can speak for myself on this. But the programs that we were associated with, I, I believe that the young people that played not only achieved certain levels, but they enjoyed doing it. It was it was sort of fun for them. Sure. We made it we made it so that it was like Coach said, he loved practice. Well, we all love to go out to practice because you know what? It was a release for the players. It was a relief for the coaches. We all Get enjoyed. Get away from my wife. <laughs> yeah, we all. You say that, I'm not. Uh, you know, it was it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable, and uh, I I think that's the bottom line. To to accomplish something, work together, and have enjoy it while you're doing it. You, you know, you know, Joe. <clears throat> It's um, amazing, okay, how many of our former student athletes, right, have gone on and hired other play, uh, former players, not, not just in their own uh, sport, but because they were mass maritime a athletes. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. You go anywhere and you say, hey, how did you get here? Oh, such and such uh, 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 told me about this opportunity and whatever. But, but it carried over from their athletic ex experience. You know? and, and Greg, seeing these, these former student athletes come back as part of the Hall of Fame and, and, and going along kind of with what Coach, just, Coach Karate just said about hiring former student athletes, you, you mentioned earlier a lot of the small talk that, that comes out of these conversations you have with former <clears throat> students and coaches. I mean, what, what's your experience with Buccaneer Just, athletes? You know, over the 20 years that I've been part of the Athletic Hall of Fame, specifically as the curator, since its inception, um, I, can, I can think of those stories. And one specifically is um, David Mick, an 86 grad football player. He is the in this area, the Jay Cashman of the West Coast. He has a huge construction company, a marine construction called Power Engineering. So I talked to Dave, still talk to him, and he had mentioned to me that Mass Maritime needs to really get into that, that market, maybe as a degree program. Another person is Bob Delholm, 91, Charter Environmental. They do the same thing. So what did I do? Connected the dots. I, introduced um, Bobby Delholm to David Mick. They came back, pitched marine construction as a program to then Brad Lima. Now there's an undergrad, while well, it's not an undergraduate degree, it's a minor. But it's that small network that's out there with former student athletes all doing similar things. And most recently, um, Chuck Richardson from Advancement reached out to me and he said, Dan McQuiggan just retired after a multi-year career with Transocean. So I reached out to Dan to congratulate him on his retirement. And I said, Dan, what are you gonna do now with all this time off? And he said, Greg, one thing I wanna do is volunteer at Mass Maritime. So sure enough, what do I do? I reach out to Mike Kelly saying, there's a former grad, very successful grad, ready to come back to give back. And so as the curator, it's kind of fun. For me, it's a, a, a way of staying in touch with former student athletes um, and keeping that connection. You know, I wanna quickly touch on one thing, and one reason I was so proud to work at this school is what um, both Bob and Don touched on is our kids are different, our athletes are different. And where I really saw that firsthand is an athletic trainer I was involved with statewide and athletic training organizations, so I would touch base on a regular basis with athletic trainers at every other college in New England. And they would always tell me, our kids, when they walked out of a contest with Mass Maritime, they were physically beat up. They would spend the Mondays and Tuesdays in the training room recovering from the games or the events, win, lose, or draw. And they would always say our kids, whether it be at Fitchburg or any other school, had such a respect for what the Mass Maritime student athlete put themselves through academically to participate in sport. And so for me, that was pride. Um, and I'll always remember, you know, and I think Rugsy was there with me. Um, I, you, you see those special, special occasions or 
events that you remember. And I remember if, we, if you talk about an athletic event, yeah, there was some championships back in the early 80s that were special. Baseball, basketball, football, that run was pretty crazy. But what do I remember most? I remember 9-11 when we're sitting in the weight room and we're watching kids watching that screen as the Twin Towers are falling. And you're reading them and you're looking at the, the anger, the frustration, the, the, the sheer um, impact of a day that we all remember. And then, you know, we take it to a point where I believe we played that Saturday and looking at the, you know, you talk about pride, pride in our flag, pride in our country, pride in that school. That's what I remember about the kids that play at Mass Maritime. It, they're different in, in, in a real positive way. And that's why it was very easy for me to spend my entire career in one school working with student athletes from a wellness standpoint as an athletic trainer. Oh, uh, we, we need to give out uh, credit where credit's due. Uh, I was the athletic director here. I didn't want to have a Hall of Fame. <laughs> I, was, I was concerned about having a Hall of Fame and not being able to to uh, uh, accomplish it. Rick it was a commandant of cadets and we had, and it was Admiral Bresnahan. And it took them three years to get me to uh, develop the uh, uh, Hall of Fame. But guess what? Again, it was them working with me rather than pushing it on me or whatever. It was the administration saying, hey, Lord, you need to do this. It's the right thing to do. All right. But it was not my vision. It was not something I wanted to do. And then it's turned into being, you know, uh, uh, such a uh, great event, you know. And, uh, but I, uh, it was the credit to uh, Rick and, and to uh, Admiral uh, uh, Bresnahan, yeah. Yeah. those two fellows. Yeah, it always, you and I have talked so many times um, when the two sides of campus, and it, that's kind of a, a thing at every school is the athletics compared to the academics, right? But here, uh, th there is a lot of working together between academics and athletics, and, and you make it work. And, and like Greg said, the athletes are better for it. And, I think they really are. It, you know, the, the administration here has is, is always been uh, supportive of uh, athletics, uh, always. G guess what? You know, uh, I think that uh, uh, it, there's always going to be a conflict because you, <clears throat> you always want more. And as an athletic director, you're supposed to be supportive of, of that. But <clears throat> take the, the winter cruise, all right? Uh, of course, we didn't want that to happen, but guess what? We worked it. We worked it uh, uh, together. So, yeah, the uh, the presidents that that, um, that have been here have been extremely uh, supportive of uh, Mass Maritime Buccaneers. Which helps out, brings in yep. a lot of kids. Right yep. now, we have close to 450 uh, student athletes that are here, men and women, out of the mm -hmm. 1,700 undergrads. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely a, a large percentage that, <laughs> that play sports here. <laughs> And guess what? Uh, it really helps out uh, as far as admissions is, is concerned. So it's, it works both ways. Absolutely. You know, it works for athletics, and it also works for, for the administration to bring in the right uh, young people to uh, represent, uh, represent this school. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I know we could talk forever with the three of you. We could go through so many stories. Uh, but I do thank you, the three of you, for coming on uh, and speaking with us for our uh, homecoming and, and reunion weekend that we're going to be doing virtually this year uh, for obvious reasons. But guys, I really do thank you uh, for coming in. And again, uh, we have Coach Bob Karate, Coach Don Ruggieri, and Greg Polino here uh, joining us here today um, to talk about the tradition and history of uh, Massachusetts Maritime Academy uh, Buccaneer Athletics. Uh, again, I'm Joe Malkin. Thank you for joining us, and um, we'll be back shortly.